Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. Welcome back if you're returning. Hello if you are new and today we are going to be talking about the Micah Miller case. I'm probably going to get this video up pretty much as soon as it's edited because I wanted to upload this video at some point last week. Unfortunately, I was going through my own family tragedy. It is looking in the positive direction right now, but things are still kind of going on behind the scenes in my own personal life. I took a step back from much content creating over the past week or so. So, so I could focus on that. I do want to say before we delve into this topic that I am not a true crime expert. I am simply a true crime fan who finds fascination in some of these cases. And this case in particular has caught my interest because the police have officially ruled it as a schmooicide. And it's just, it's just not sitting right with me as it is not for a lot of people. Now while I was sitting down and writing down all these bullet points and questions and discrepancies I had with the timeline and what we know so far, and it might be nothing, but I think it is something important to kind of keep in the back of our mind that Micah had just filed for divorce toward her husband, J.P. Miller. To me, again, this is completely speculation everybody's not going to handle situations the same but to me filing for a divorce shows an intent on at least living in the very least to elaborate if i try to put myself in the shoes momentarily of someone who is about to commit such an act mm, divorce proceedings are hard don't ask me how i know <laughs> They are costly, they are timely, and to me, uh, somebody who kind of knew maybe in the next couple of days this was her plan, um, I don't see any real point in doing that. I don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe any of the children were actually hers. I believe she was a step-parent again, but that's just a brief point that I want to bring up that's just not sitting right with me. Regardless of everything else, I feel find it very, very odd that she would even go through the hassle of filing for a divorce if that was her plan. But I have this idea in my head that maybe she was planning on filing for divorce, but maybe, maybe even then she still followed through. Or we can make the speculation that she presented these documents to her now estranged, and we know from information being released to the public that JP had quite a bit of power in the church, Who's to say that when she presented the documents that she wasn't she wasn't threatened or maybe th made to think twice about her decision? <sighs> We've come to find out that JP had issues with the IRS, so it makes me wonder maybe if Micah had some dirt on him uh, and he maybe some information that he didn't want to get out. I don't know. These are the speculations that I've had all along and unfortunately as of right now they haven't my opinion um, my opinion hasn't really changed much. So going back to the timeline we follow Micah. She leaves her house so I believe it was about like a half hour to 45 minutes. She had left her house first thing and left for a, a, like a little under an hour I believe. Could have just been a quick errand but it does kind of raise a, an alarm bell. What, what do you what do you need or what do you need to do uh, if today's the day that you're planning on doing it are you even planning on doing it was this even planned that was the whole point point. and if it was planned was it like premeditated or was it I now have the weapon from the pawn shop that I told my dad I wanted to get and that would be a perfect time I don't know we can leave that up for discussion so she leaves she comes back to the house and nothing really special happens but she leaves again about I believe about 40 minutes later now when she leaves the second time she travels straight to the pawn shop I don't know her resident address so I did some googling I have some screenshots to show you guys as well I wanted to see a visual of her traveling to her final destination. I don't have an address for a pinpoint, so I basically started at the pawn shop. But allegedly based on her ring uh, camera showing her leaving the house, it looked like she went straight to the pawn shop. Now when she was at the pawn shop, I questioned the timeline because it said it, like, it took her one minute from arriving uh, and getting out of her car to purchasing the gun. I misinterpreted that. I think what I meant is that it took her one minute to get from the car, yes, to get up to the counter to purchase the gun, but then I reread the timeline and it took about 20 minutes to finish 
to finish the purchase, which makes much more sense. But it also still shows that she was there for a purpose. She didn't walk in and browse and look around. She still went straight to the uh, counter. So she purchases the weapon that she had already alluded to purchasing when she called her father a few days prior saying, hey, I'm fearing for my safety here. I would like to get protection. Mm, here's where another alarm bell was raised for me. Mind you, I don't know what time she was supposed to be in for work. So I don't know when her co-workers were necessarily alerted that, hey, Mike is not here and maybe we should start making some phone calls because I'm jumping ahead a little bit but if you know the story to me if anybody's calling her she had her phone on because she ended up calling 911 uh, and spoke to the dispatcher I'm sorry my eyes are watering so bad oh I'm getting ahead of myself but it is important that she leaves the pawn shop around 12:34. 40 minutes after she leaves the pawn shop she's just captured by a highway camera traveling so she's still traveling to a destination after she's captured on the highway she's seen again at the gas and grill but it's right before 1 30 I believe it's like 1 27 she left the pawn shop at 12 30 basically up to right around 1 30 so that's about an hour of traveling and she's heading up north she's heading away from myrtle beach away from where solid rock baptist church is they just said i believe she was a graphic designer and then you know she's pastor's wife so i assume she works for the church or would have work down in myrtle beach so if she's reporting to work for that saturday why she would be traveling up north and not staying down south in south carolina is confusing as well. I also think it's a little bizarre that at the gas station they only had a CCTV camera outside. Every gas station I've ever been to has cameras behind the counter. They have them all throughout. I just thought it was a little bit weird that no CT CCTV footage has been released of um, Micah actually in the gas station purchasing the the drink. Maybe there is, and I just haven't seen it yet. But then this is where I started screenshotting some stuff, okay? So this first screenshot shows the 1852 address is the pawn shop, okay? So we're just going to call that Dick's Pawn Shop. It's the Mr. Joe White Avenue. That's Dick's Pawn Shop. The 41 Grocery and Grill is the gas station. So in between where it says 51 minutes, at some point that's where she was captured on CCTV camera on the highway between the hours of 12.30 and 1.30 in the afternoon. Then this raised flags as well, okay? She is not seen on camera again after she leaves this 41 Grocery and grill after she got her gas and her drink and she's not heard um, until she gets to the park which is the Lumber River State Park pin up here. Now she could have gone a different direction absolutely but just based up on what would pull up on maps it gave me two different routes. Both of these routes jump on a highway I believe it was highway 76 I did write this down for you. US 76, okay? I believe both of these routes, both the 41 minute and the 52 minute route, eventually had to get onto Route 76. Or they had to pass post offices, they had to pass uh, churches, fire stations. My point being, places that would have CCTV camera footage outside. So have the investigators looked at businesses on the routes that she would have possibly taken to see if her car could have been captured. See if possibly someone else is in the car, see what's going on, I don't know. The other eerie thing is that she passed a ton of cemeteries, like tons of cemeteries. The closer she got to this park, it was like the more cemeteries. It was very eerie looking at this. I even took a screenshot when the route would take her off of the highway. So it basically gives her a left or a right to take up to this park. If she takes a right, you can see a post Postal service right there so unless they've already gone to this postal office and have asked for their security cameras she could have taken a left and she avoided any federal buildings that way I believe it was like a Dollar General um, little shops like that but it was mostly open and like cemeteries which brings me to another point can we just go back to the 41 grocery and grill screenshot real quick I took another one for you look at the area around that okay there is so what it looks like so much wooded area to go to and the fact that again she wasn't even familiar with the park that her body was 
found at. It just, it just makes no sense. It makes no sense that she says, I want my body to be found, and then literally goes uh, in, into waist high what We'll get into that into my next video, but there was a couple TikToks released about the fishermen we'll get into, but I get that it's a public park, but then where she goes in the public park makes no sense. Like she, she almost would have been, it almost would have been luckier to find her in an area like this than it would have been a state park off a beaten path in waist high water. But that's just me. Uh, here's my issue, okay? Maybe someone can answer this for me. Maybe I'm just not thinking it through, and that's okay. I do that sometimes. So where Micah is the last seen at the grocery and grill, she arrived at 127. She leaves about 135. Okay, so that's 10 minutes to get fill up on gas and to get a drink. Doesn't that seem really, really, really quick? Like not even 10 minutes. 127 to 135, that's eight minutes. I don't think she's filling up on a full tank here. I don't think she's planning on getting home or she's in a rush. Maybe something spooked her. Maybe she was nervous. Maybe she saw somebody. But when I typically go to a gas station, if it just to fill up, I mean, it takes me a minute. I got to take out my card. I got to, you know, unscrew the cap. I got to put it in. I got to put my information. It usually takes a minute to process. I got to take it out. I got to put that in. And then if you got to go in and pay... It just seems really, 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 really fast, okay? But that's not even the other, th that's not even the thing that I want to get on. That's just a point that I'm making. The gas station was really, really fast to fill up gas and to get a drink. I think she just threw a little bit of gas in there and got out. Because there is footage of her getting gas. I'm not doubting that. I just think she she got it in a hurry. Um, but here's my, my here's my thing. Okay, so she now leaves with at least a little bit of gas and uh, a drink. She leaves at 135 and the phone call to the police was made at let me get this right 254 p.m. What is wrong with that? 135 to 254 that's about an hour and a half 135 to 254 just under an hour and a half right but we looked at the two routes together again she could have taken a whole different route we don't know about absolutely that's it that's an, an entire possibility however one route was 41 minutes one route was 52 minutes what were we doing in the 45 minutes between the last time that you were seen? Like, do you, know, you know what I'm saying? Do you see, are you, she leaves at 135, is not seen again. Like, not seen at all, but she makes a phone call at 2.54, almost an hour and a half later. But hear me out, to get from the gas station to the park, it only took, at most under an hour. So we're still looking at about 30 to 40 minutes unaccounted for. So she, well, was well, she sitting in her car pondering that entire time? That's almost an hour to kill. That's a lot of time to talk yourself into something. That's a lot of time to talk yourself out of something. That's a lot of time to rethink things. That's a lot of time to convince yourself you're doing the right thing. But then she makes a phone call. In my mind, there's still the possibility of maybe po maybe AI generation. So that's where I'm gonna leave today's video. I just thought it was some interesting points that kind of get us thinking. If you guys have anything to add, please feel free to have a discussion below. And I will see you guys in my next one.